a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, some Jews from Antioch and Iconium arrived and won over the crowds. They stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples gathered around him, he got up and entered the city. On the following day, he left with Barnabas for Derbe. After they had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, It is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed presbyters for them in each church and with prayer and fasting commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled through Presidia and reached Pamphylia. After proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Atala. From there, they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. Then they spent no little time with the disciples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse in the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom making known to men your might and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. Your, your friends, friends make known, known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. May my mouth speak the praise of the Lord, and may all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Your friends make to suffer and to rise from the dead, and so enter into his glory. Dominus Fobiscum, et cum Spiritu Tuo, Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioannem, Gloria Tibi Domine. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you I am going away and I will come back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. I will no longer speak much with you, for the ruler of the world is coming. He has no power over me, but the world must know that I love the Father and that I do just as the Father has commanded me. 
Verbum Domini. Well, Father John Paul, we got our rose garden here, our merry, merry garden here. And last night, he and I were in here for about an hour just enjoying the beauty of the flowers, the fragrance of the roses, and just quietly praying here. And we both had huge smiles on our gen we were chuckling a little bit of the generosity of all of you who sent these roses to honor Our Lady. And for those of you who may not have seen the homilies the last two days on Sunday, I spoke about a merry garden and encouraged people to pray the rosary. And as a symbol of praying that rosary or a commitment to pray that rosary, to send us a rose. And then Father John Paul exhorted them even more yesterday to fill this place up. And so yesterday we were just overwhelmed with all of these roses coming. And uh, one of the florists said to us as she's delivering all of these roses, she said, you know, people were calling and she said, but they were just so happy to do this. And of course she was delighted too, being out of business during the whole coronavirus crisis, that this has helped her. But she said that people were just so happy to be able to do this in some way. So we're just delighted at uh, the response and to have this beautiful garden of roses. And, you know, the, the word rosary in Latin is rosarium. And that word means rose garden. And so these are really symbolic of what we want to offer Our Lady, a spiritual bouquet. And today it's a very special day. We're gonna be praying a very special rosary after this mass at eight o'clock. And there's this initiative to give Our Lady of Fatima, the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima is tomorrow, and to give Our Lady of Fatima five million rosaries as a spiritual bouquet. And uh, so it is something in which we're gonna join in that initiative. We'll be praying a very special rosary of the Fatima hymn as part of that rosary at eight o'clock here Central Time, so shortly after the live daily Mass. We invite you to stay and join us and to offer that spiritual bouquet to Our Lady. And the rector at the Shrine of Our Lady of Fatima in Portugal, uh, Father Cabasinas, he has agreed to bring these spiritual bouquets and to, with a ceremony, in the Capolina, the little chapel where Our Lady appeared, to present them to her on May 13th, tomorrow, as well as October 13th, which is the anniversary of the last apparition. So these roses that we're delighted to receive, and I'm sure there's gonna be more coming that some of them couldn't get here today, but probably from now on, offer just the spiritual bouquets to Our Lady, to make that commitment to pray the rosary every day, to give it to her. And what the intention is for this uh, spiritual bouquet we're offering is especially for family life, for respect for the dignity of all human life, and so on. For, so, so we know that there's a, a crisis in family life in the respect of the dignity of human life, and we're especially bringing this bouquet to Our Lady praying for her, the triumph of her immaculate heart over any of these evils. And we can also add, of course, the coronavirus evil, that she would triumph over all of these things um, through her intercession, her powerful intercession. I just wanted to read last night as I was sitting here and enjoying the flowers and the fragrance and praying a rosary, I read um, every one of the little cards that uh, came along with the flowers that you sent so generously. And I just read a few of them. To Our Lady with all my love, someone from New York. Another one had simply family. So we've said, we're family. And they took that to heart and said, this is from family. For Mary's garden, 
We love you, Blessed Mother. I send these 12 roses along with 12 rosaries, another dear lady, to Mary, Queen of the Rosary a family from Michigan, and a, a, a prayer group from New York uh, offers 24 rosaries with the 24 roses they sent. So once again, thank you for your generous response uh, to our appeal to have this beautiful rose garden here, right here in our chapel to honor Our Lady and let those roses, those physical roses, then be turned into this spiritual bouquet that we want to offer to Our Lady in praying the rosary faithfully. Now, as we look at our scriptures today, we're continuing our way through the Acts of the Apostles. And we heard about how St. Paul, he, there's an attempt made on his life to stone him to death. And so stoning was a horrible thing where these rocks were thrown at the person until they were unconscious, until they were dead. And so those that had stoned Paul, they dragged him after they finished that, they dragged him out and they supposed that he was dead. But the disciples gathered around him, they prayed, and Paul gets up. <laughs> And what's his first reaction? We're going to go on to the next town and preach the gospel there. And then after that happens in Derby, then they retreat, retrace their steps to the communities that were just founded. So they're going, they went first north and east into what is today modern-day Turkey, and now they're going to return west and south and visiting those communities that he had previously visited. And there they establish priests. They ordain priests to oversee the community. But imagine what Paul looked like. If you've got huge stones being hurled at you, he had cuts, he had to have bruises. He had to look a lot different than when they first saw him when he's visiting these other communities. And what does St. Paul say to them? He exhorted them to persevere in the faith. And he said, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. So he, he exhorted them to persevere in the faith. Yes, there's going to be difficulties, there's going to be opposition, there's going to be troubles and trials. But persevere, persevere. You may undergo hardships, but the reward is going to be worth it. And the peace that Christ gave in the gospel, peace I give you. It's not like the world gives, it's something much deeper because the world's peace is dependent on how things are going. But the peace that Christ gives us, peace I give you, it's my gift to you, <clears throat> not as the world gives, it's much deeper. It can't be shaken. As Mother Teresa would often say, there may be ripples on the surface of the water, but deep down there's peace. And that's that soul that knows Christ. That's what St. Paul knew. Yes, we may undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of heaven, but persevere in the faith. And that's a good word for all of us, isn't it? And Mary is our sweetness, too, along this journey. You know, the saint that we celebrate today, St. Leopold Mandich, what a remarkable Franciscan friar he was. And something miraculous happened that he predicted would happen. He was the apostle of the confessional. So he would spend like 12 hours a day in the confessional. And this was for almost 40 years. And it wasn't a comfortable place, but he had there a statue of Our Lady and he always wanted fresh flowers in front of Our Lady. So he had a devotion to Our Lady. <clears throat> he would look to her and he would especially entrust to her the more difficult cases that he heard in hearing confessions and giving people counseling. And people really experienced when they came to him that he was a dear friend. They felt respected, they felt loved. Yes, they were sinners in need of his, uh, God's reconciliation through him, but they were loved by God. And he said, we'll be friends, you know, we'll remain friends. It was something that they experienced just his love for them. 
Sometimes he was criticized that he was just uh, too indulgent toward the penitents. But he said, well, I learned that from our Lord. And he said, I didn't lay down my life like our Lord did for them. So he was this man who was generous, but this miracle that happened was during World War II, which he died in 1942, so it was just beginning, and he prophesied that indeed bombs were to destroy the church and much of the friary, but he said this little cell where he heard confessions would be preserved as well as the statue of Our Lady, because it was to remain as a testament to God's mercy all the mercy that God had shown to people there in the confessional. So what a remarkable man that we remember today um, on this memorial of St. Leopold Mondic here in the uh, Franciscan community. One final point that I wanted to make today as well <clears throat> is that we heard how, so St. Paul and Barnabas they go and they go on this first missionary journey. They come back and then they go back to the church at Antioch where they had started, where they'd been commissioned, where they'd been sent out by the Holy Spirit for the work that he had for them to do. And now they're returning back to the home base. And what did we hear at the end of today's first reading? When they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done. They reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. Father uh, Scanlon, uh, the, who is remembered happily as a former president of Steubenville University, he had a saying that I like very much. He said, if you know the glory, tell the story. So they were there, they're reporting, this is what God did. He opened the door of faith to these people who had never heard the gospel. And he'd opened the door, he'd opened their hearts to receive it. And these churches sprang up where we preached the gospel. And yes, we endured these hardships, and yet God was working and he was making the church grow. And we all need to remember that, don't we? What God has done what he's done in our lives, what he has done to bring us to this day safely, and to praise him for that. If we know the glory to tell the story, certainly this network is itself a testament to his providence, to his mercy, to his goodness. And I often see the network as especially an instrument of his mercy to all of us, to all of us. St. Leopold Mondic, as he was dying, he prayed the Hail Holy Queen. And it is said that his last words were, my life, our life, our sweetness, and our hope.